We're summoning minions and delivering death blows. That's right, it's Sorcery Contested Realm by Eric's Curioso Limited. In this card conjuring combat game, two players take on the role of avatars, each attempting to slay the other by summoning minions, empowering them with artifacts and auras, and casting powerful spells, players fight for control of the realm. If one player manages to deal enough damage to the opposing avatar, that avatar is at death's door. Any amount of damage dealt to the avatar after that and they're defeated. The attacking player then wins the game. Setup begins with the realm map, which features a 5 by 4 grid of squares. Each square is a void at the start of the game that cannot be traversed except with special powers. Avatars fill these voids with sites to create their domain, allowing them to then place and move units to fight in epic battles for control of the realm. Each player sets their avatar in the center square of the row closest to them. They each take their sight cards and shuffle them face down into a draw deck known as the Atlas deck, placing it to the right on their realm. They then shuffle their minions, artifacts, auras, and magics into another face-down draw deck known as their Spellbook deck, which is placed below their Atlas deck. The space below the Spellbook is known as their Cemetery, or Personal Discard. Each player draws a starting hand of six cards, three from their Atlas, three from their Spellbook. Before beginning the game, each player may look at their hand and return any number of cards to the bottom of their respective deck before replenishing back up to six cards. Select a player to take the first turn. Before we jump into gameplay, let's look at some of the cards. Avatars have a name and fantastic art, a life total, this is the amount of damage they can endure before they're placed at death's door, a power rating, which is the amount of damage they deal in combat, and a text box for abilities. Avatars are special in that they cannot be removed from the realm through game effects. Sights are cards that provide power for the avatar. They have a name and type, an elemental icon, either fire, water, air, or earth, but not all sights have these, and a text box for abilities or effects. At the start of their turn, a player's sights each provide them with one mana, the core resource of the game. Mana is used to play cards and activate abilities. Spell cards come in four types. Minions, artifacts, auras, and magics. All of these have a name and mana cost. Minions also have an elemental affinity that must be met before they can be played. If a player has a site with that element, the requirement is fulfilled. Additionally, minions have a power rating, which is not only their damage, but also their life total. If their life is reduced to zero, they go to the cemetery. Gameplay occurs in turns, each divided into three phases. Start phase, main phase, and end phase. First up, in the start phase. The active player resolves any start of turn abilities on their cards, then untaps all of their cards in the realm. Tapped cards are oriented sideways. To untap them, simply orient them upright. We'll explain more about tapping in a sec. Then the player draws a single card into their hand. This card can come from either of their decks. Note that on the first turn of the first player, this draw step is skipped for balance. I mean, you don't get to go first and get more cards. Next, in the main phase, the active player may take any number of actions, such as playing a sight, casting spells, or activating abilities. Let's look at some examples. Playing sights. These can only be played with an avatar's ability, which allows them to tap in order to place a sight. They are placed within the realm on an open square. On any player's first turn, they must establish their domain by playing a sight card to their avatar square. On subsequent turns, a site must be placed adjacent to another site that player controls. Adjacency is orthogonal. Sites can be either land or water. All sites are made of two levels, the surface and the subsurface. All the main action happens on the surface. The subsurface is a hard to reach place where most minions would immediately die, unless they have abilities which allow them to traverse the underground region or underwater. Cards in the surface are placed atop sites, subsurface under them. 
A site that has been destroyed is placed in its owner's cemetery. But rather than reverting back to the void, the site is instead replaced with rubble, a face-down card or rubble token. Rubble is a neutral land site that no player controls and provides no mana or threshold, but can be passed through. New sites can be placed here, removing the rubble. Casting spells. Any non-site card is considered a spell and must be played onto the realm from a player's hand by paying its mana cost. Players gain one mana per site at the top of their turn, and any new sites played also provide one mana. They must have enough to pay the cost of a spell to play it. Excess mana on a turn doesn't carry over, it's lost. As mentioned, some minions have elemental affinities. Unlike mana, the player simply needs to have the requirement fulfilled on their sites. When any units enter the realm, they have summoning sickness, which means it cannot tap to use its ability on the same turn it entered play. Minions must be cast onto a site. Most minions cannot exist in the void, and if they ever find their way to a void, they're immediately banished or removed from the game. Some minions, however, have the Void Walk ability, which ignores this game effect. Artifacts can be conjured either onto a site or directly onto a unit. Units can carry any number of artifacts. Auras are cast to the borders of squares, affecting multiple sites at once. Magics are the only cards which don't enter play. Their effect is simply resolved and the card is placed in the cemetery. Finally, players can activate abilities. Avatars, minions, artifacts, and auras all have abilities that can be activated as an action. Most have a cost, such as tapping, paying mana, discarding cards, etc. In addition to their listed abilities, units, including minions, avatars, and artifact automatons have access to basic abilities, move, attack, and interact. When moving, a unit's path is broken into steps. One step moves a unit one square adjacently. Generally, units have one step for movement, but some effects increase this or even allow diagonal movements. Once a unit is declared to move, the opposing player first has the option to intercept if the path travels through a location they occupy. The opponent may choose to tap their unit and prematurely stop the other unit's movement, forcing the moving unit to attack them first. Alternatively, a unit may choose to tap itself to move and attack another unit or site if it is within its range of movement. If the unit needs to move to do so, they can be intercepted by other units first, just like in our previous example. In any case, once combat occurs, it's split into three steps. Opponent may defend. If other enemies are at that location, they may tap to defend the target. Enemy untapped units in adjacent locations may also tap to move to the location and defend. In those cases, if the target was a site, the combat is diverted to the defending units. If the target was a unit, the defending player chooses whether or not that unit also participates in the combat. Strike. The units deal damage equal to their power simultaneously. Attackers distribute damage however they choose if multiple defenders exist. Damage. Minions who take damage equal to or exceeding their power are slain and go to the cemetery. If they survive, damage doesn't carry over turns. Avatar damage persists throughout the game, and if they ever reach zero, they are now at death's door. When this occurs, they're immune to all damage for the rest of that turn. Then, any further damage dealt to them after that turn is a death blow, and that player loses the game. Additionally, attacking an undefended site allows players to hit the avatar's life total, but this isn't considered damage in the sense that it can deal a killing blow. You have to hit the avatar for that. Interact. Once per turn, a unit at rest may pick up an artifact at its location. It may also drop an artifact at its location. However, a unit that has engaged in combat this turn 
cannot drop any artifacts it's carrying. A unit that has used an artifact's activated ability this turn cannot drop that artifact. And that's the main actions. Finally, in the end phase, any end of turn abilities trigger. Players remove damage to minions and artifacts before passing the turn to the opposing player. Play continues with avatars and minions traversing the realm, building domains by planting sites, and casting magics to defeat their enemies. Once an avatar at death's door receives an additional damage, they are slain and the opponent wins the game. And that's the basics of Sorcery Contested Realm. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and you are awesome. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and come on back for more great games and good times. We'll see you later.